Welcome back to the channel. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. I'm Brian Baker and this is the Family Burnout Wagon. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. On top of the supercharger is a Holly 4160 vacuum secondary 750 CFM carburetor that has been modified to have a boost reference power valve. This time we're going to use a kit that came from e85carburetors.com to modify this carburetor even further. Here's the kit from Rob Mix Services. Instructions, pretty sweet sticker as all kits should. High flow power valves. And I guess one's the plug gaskets and stuff. E D5 friendly pump. Squirter and jets. 90 and 100. Jets. That is awesome that it comes with jets. B. And then B. I guess they're both Bs. So I'm a little disappointed that we don't have gaskets yet. But maybe they're in here. Don't get judgy yet. Oh, we got gaskets. Oh, a little air horn in there. That's cool. It looks like we have what we need. I'm going to read through these instructions. And before I go pull in the carburetor off the car and we'll come back after I know what we're doing. The reason we want to switch this thing over to E85 is pretty simple. Essentially race cast performance for regular unleaded prices. After making sure all the parts are in the box we can assemble the metering blocks before we remove the carb from the car. We'll start here with the power valve. Take care to make sure the power valve gasket is seated properly. I like this hanging method for installing it. Take a look around to make sure the gasket isn't sticking out unevenly. Then tighten it until snug with a 1 inch wrench. It doesn't need to be very tight. The same is true for the jets. They don't have to be very tight. They're only brass. There's a special tool for this, but if you're changing jets infrequently, careful use of a wide flathead screw stick will do the trick. The instructions say whatever side the plug goes in gets the larger jets, hundreds in my case, and becomes the secondary side. The power valve goes in the primary side and gets the smaller jets, and those are 90s in my case. With the secondaries and the primary side metering blocks done, we can pull the carb off and get started on it. You don't want to watch me do this shit. Like, in real time. Nobody does. Look, you had me at meat of a fit. In my experience, removing the bottom bolt from each bowl and working the accelerator pump is the fastest way to drain the carb without spilling it all over myself. Once we get the carb situated on the bench, we can start working on the primary side for no particular reason. The primary side can be identified by the choke horn on the flap up here. The secondary side is typically at the rear of the engine, closer to the windshield. The vacuum pod for the vacuum secondaries is on the passenger side of the carb with the choke. The instructions say to modify one side of the carb at a time, and I'd recommend this. Make sure you use something soft for that. You can totally do this in the vehicle. I chose to remove it from the car to make it easier to film and because I have a supercharger. I don't want to risk dropping anything into it. I also want to take the time to null out my car by squaring up the transfer slots here to get rid of my high idle. I also want to give the carb a general look over before I slam it back on the car and set everything back to null. This will help a lot later whenever we're trying to tune it because it'll be set at a baseline. In a previous video we modified this carburetor to have a boost reference power valve. This line was installed to move the power valve's vacuum signal to under the supercharger and this passage was blocked off because when the supercharger makes boost it creates vacuum above the supercharger which could close the power valve when we want it open causing a lean spot in the tune when the boost comes in. Just for my personal reference, I have 70 jets in the primary side and it runs really well at part throttle. Internet Wisdom says to go up 10 jet sizes when switching to E85. I also have a 6.5 power valve which is better for the supercharger. I might need to order a 6.5 power valve in the high flow flavor for this tune. To illustrate the difference between the needle and seat and power valve from the E85 carb and the gas carb, I have them laid side by side here. This one is a 130, which is really difficult to see on camera, sorry. And this one says 110, so this one flows more, and this is the high flow power valve. It has four holes compared to the other stock's two holes. And these are part of what makes up for that extra 40% fuel volume that's needed to run E85 on a given carburetor. Next we're going to null the primary side idle air screws. Take them all the way in to where they're seated gently, then come out a half one, one and a half turns on all four corners so you know they're all set when you install the carburetor. Now we can move on to the bowl conversion which is 
essentially just changing out the needle and seat. So we can throw on some tunes. The float only needs to come out if you don't already have a plastic float. Make sure that little ball on the bottom of the rubber diaphragm pops through the bottom of the bowl. This bracket needs to touch the needle and seat. Magnetic screwdrivers make this job so much easier. The seam for the float bowl should be at the bottom of the plug while holding the bowl assembly upside down. The needle assembly in until the float bowl is in the right place and that should be a good starting point. Then we can snug everything down. Next we can change out the bolt washer gaskets. Run through and make sure everything's tight. One more again. That ain't going nowhere. We're going to take our freshly rebuilt metering block, line these two pins up with the main body and slide it in. Take our rebuilt bowl with screws in it. I put my pinky on the accelerator pump arm, lift up the accelerator pump linkage. The instructions have a pretty neat trick where when you're tightening down the bowl's bolts, you rotate the entire bowl so that you take out any slot between the accelerator pump arm and linkage while you tighten down the bolt. If you want to add this to your rebuild routine, I'd treat it like side bets in Vegas, either always or never, because consistency is key. We'll torque these down with the old calibrated elbow, click, 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 click. Now that this side's finished, we can go on to the secondary side. It's mostly the same story with this side with a few differences. What we should have done on the other side is take note of where the flow bowl level is before you take it apart and then you'll get it a lot closer whenever it's in the car. The old aftermarket Holly metering block is already blanked off for us. Wait, what is that? Oh, no way. It was a piece of casting that was left over from the manufacturing. That's kind of neat. I guess I didn't do a very good job of cleaning this up. Swapping all the same gaskets out over here, but we're not gonna take the flow pole out on this side. The only needles are both 110, the new one is 130. That's adjusted. Screws are nulled. I got an email response from Mr. E85 carburetor himself last night and the solution to the problem is don't run the plug. Just that simple. The issue is that there's no recess there in the main body of the carbu carburetor that lets the plug or a second power valve slide in. So you can't actually bolt this metering block to the body of the carburetor. If you're not going to run the plug or if you're not going to run a secondary power valve is to jet down 10 sizes as a starting point at least. Then we can tune and jet from there with the wide band O2 sensor. Now we're good to go to keep assembling. I'll go ahead and jet down right now so I don't forget to do it later. And we've already set our bowl height on this. The last step of this is right inside of here and it's the squirter. Good night. This thing is a nightmare to get out on the car without dropping something in the engine. So I would highly recommend not doing it in the car unless you've done so you know multiple times before if you leave your throttle blades closed when you're doing it on the car you can at least pick up whatever you drop but it's not easy to do this on the car small gasket right there it fell down exactly like I said it was in it lucky for us it's not in the car oh there's the little gasket that was in the bottom. And this is super important. We have to put this back in that hole down there. You gotta be really gentle with it. You don't wanna mar it up or anything. Now the jet we had was a 31 and he sent us a 45. It's a massive change, but we'll give it a try and see how she likes it. The metal washer gasket we're gonna put on the screw that holds down our injector or squirter. The squirter goes with the nozzles pointing down and into the bores. Then on the bottom, we're gonna put this other gasket here. Here's the trick, is trying to get this whole assembly down in this bore without dropping everything. 
That washer's in place. Nozzle's in place. Now the screw that holds it all together. Oh, come on now. You stop it right now. And remember, we're, we're squishing this metal gasket on top. So it's going to be a little hard going in. And then you'll feel it snug up. And that's perfect. In order to get the AC to work properly on the car, I idled it up, adjusting the idle screw right here. And the problem with that is these transfer slots right down here are only supposed to be showing 32 thousandths of an inch um, or basically down to where they're square. And if you don't have it set up like that, you run into the issue that you're no longer using just the idle circuit. You're actually on your primary circuit whenever you're idling. I really need to idle this guy down. The choke is now open and these guys are now set to where they're square and that's pretty much what you want just so that the idle circuit is square the carb is now nulled out my idle settings are set to null all four corners of the mixture are set to null so this carb is ready to go on the vehicle now that's going to be it for this carb carburetor modification video if you like this content please go ahead and hit the subscribe button give me a like down there if you want to see me tuning this carb uh, and getting it set up onto the car go to this video up here link directly to the family burnout wagon uh, being swapped over to e85 completely i appreciate you joining uh, thank you as always and we'll see you next time